All right, so November is in full swing and amazing results are already starting to appear in the community. In this video, we're going to talk about what the challenge is, why it's a good idea to take part, and also who you should keep an eye on for inspiration, tips and tricks. Hopefully by showing you some of the amazing content that's already appeared over the last few days, it will inspire you to start learning more about material nodes and what they're capable of, so that you can perhaps use these new skills in your own projects. For all of the uninitiated people, November is a yearly challenge intended to help you improve and show off your procedural skills. The way you take part is by following the list of prompts for every day of the month, posting your results on social media, and tagging them with the November and November 2020 hashtag. Of course, the full challenge is to try and take part for every day of the month, but a lot of people don't do them all, and some people carry on past November into December to make up for lost time. Regardless of whether you intend to do everything, or just want to dip your feet in to learn something new, I encourage you to try and take part in at least one prompt. The great thing about this challenge is that it also allows the community to collectively come up with new techniques to construct shapes and visuals, and hopefully share this knowledge with other people. So overall, the entire community benefits from focused studies like this, and especially in regards to Blender, it brings more attention to the node systems so developers can see how much of a demand there is for new features. Erin Dale has released a new video called Top 10 Tips for November, which I recommend. There's some really nice pieces of information in there, including tiling, using drivers, and vector displacement. It's a good place to start if you want to get into the mood before diving into the challenge. And of course, if you haven't seen them already, I recently did a collection of videos specifically focused on shader-based resources. Some of the free resources shared in these videos can be used to help you create your own results, since there's a bunch of node presets you can slot into your own materials. But from a learning perspective, getting proficient at dissecting other people's blend files can teach you a lot about new techniques. Experimenting with techniques for yourself can really help to solidify new ideas in your memory. So to get you inspired, let's take a look at some of the amazing results already appearing in the community. First of all, for day one, the prompt is cookie. So many people decided to go for the traditional chocolate chip cookie for this one, but it really doesn't matter if everyone does the same idea, because all of the results will be made in slightly different ways. And that's one of the really cool things about this challenge, you'll get to see how everyone approaches similar problems in very different ways. Simon Thomas did this one that breaks apart. It's an excellent result as always, it's good to see them doing the challenge again this year, because their results that I showed off in my 2019 November video were really impressive and gained a lot of attention. Jonas Deschel showed off here with an Oreo animation. Luca Rude decided to flex with a fractal cookie pattern. Devanshu made this lovely one in Houdini. Then here's Gabe's very visually pleasing one made in Blender. JC put a festive spin on things with this Christmassy cookie. I think this is visually one of my favourites. Ghoulish Codling got creative with the interpretation and did the cookie monster. And then Erindale decided to go all the way and started showing off with a milk dipping animation, all made with nodes. If you're asking yourself how in the world do they make things like this, well check out the feeds where the creators share their entries, because they might be nice enough to give you a sneak peek of how it was made. A lot of them like to share an overview of their node graphs like Erin did here. Erin is also uploading time lapses of their entries on their YouTube channel, and as well as this, Charon from Just 3D Things and CG Matter under the default cube channel are also posting YouTube content out daily, so these are good places to get a deep look at the step-by-step -step creation and thought process. Okay, for day two, the prompt was candy. Sam Deham made a classic lollipop shape. CG Matter also did the same thing, and as I say, they went ahead and made a half an hour video on the process, which you can watch on the default cube channel. Gabe came out over here flexing on the other entries with this soft caramel animation. But sneaking around the corner, Lou Carood came out of nowhere and took it a step further by doing the same idea, except without a primitive. So yes, that means that they did the entire thing using an environment shader. Armin did this visually pleasing collection of gummy bears, but again, they weren't the only one to go for this idea. Charon also went for a gummy bear. And Erindale comes in here with a Mr. Bassett animation flex. It's crazy to think that all of this is done with just a basic sphere. And he has also provided a very quick time-lapse video showing the process. I suppose it's just proof of his madness, this man has receipts. Ben did a happy candy corn animation with his shader displacement technique. Speaking of which, make sure to watch our collaboration video where we talk about his real-time shader displacement system for Eevee. Then here comes Simon again with a candy wrapper animation. But of course, they're not the only one to do this idea. Here comes JC in style with their own unwrapping animation. Now at the time of recording this, it's day three, so people are currently working on the fruit prompt. If you want to ride this wave and take the opportunity to learn some new node skills, then just jump in. And if you want to feel insecure about your skill level, then head on over to Twitter and follow the official Node-Vember profile. Okay, that's all for today. Remember to like, subscribe, follow me, and join our Discord server if you're interested in sharing your work and taking part in discussions. So thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.